In this video, I'm gonna be going over how to learn a language as fast as humanly possible. And I'm gonna be sharing with you five very important tips in order to do so. And stay tuned to the end because the last tip is arguably the most important. Normally, I wouldn't really recommend you to set a goal based off of speed, like, oh, I wanna learn this language as quickly as possible. But I think deep down, everyone does. No one wants to take 12 months to get to a place that could take two months, right? Um, and for me personally, being the INTJ that I am, I'm obsessed with efficiency. So this video is kind of like a thought experiment. If I were going to learn my languages again, how would I do it? If someone had a gun to my head and was like, listen, you gotta learn this language to a conversational fluent level in like the next six to 12 months, how would I do it if I had to do it again? So tip number one is to use a beginner audio program. Um, you guys know me already. You guys know I love uh, I love language transfer. I love uh, Michelle Thomas and I love Pimsler. The reason why I love audio programs to help teach you languages is not necessarily because of the fastest way to kind of learn a language, but because you can actually interact with them and learn from them in your downtime. When you're on your commute, when you're going to school, when you're on the school bus, when you are walking the dog, you can be learning your language uh, and that is priceless because it's not always about learning something as fast as humanly possible, but also being smart about how you use the time in your day and making the most use out of downtime. So among all those programs, I would probably recommend Pimsleur as the easiest to listen to while you're doing uh, external activities. If you do want to try out Pimsleur for free because it is like a monthly subscription thing, there's a link in my description. I've been partnered for them for ages. For any other audio program, I can't really hook you up with that, but at least for Pimsleur, I got you. But the moral of the story, is that if you are a beginner, or even if you're intermediate, finding audio programs that are structured, that really teach you uh, in a very, very kind of clear and concise way can go a very long way in terms of learning a language quickly because you can do them while you're doing a bunch of other things. Tip number two is frequency lists. You gotta make use out of them. Essentially, if you don't know what frequency lists are, there are lists out there of the most common used words in any given language. Um, and why this is important is because oftentimes you'll find that the 1,000 or let's say the 2,000 most common words in most languages will make up, let's say 80% or 85% of what you'll hear in actual conversations. That means if you learn a set of like the most common 2,000 words in, in whatever language that you're learning, uh, essentially you're maximizing the time that you're spending. And if you can stomach it after a very short time, you're gonna be able to actually start um, getting into content in your target language, whether that's TV shows or books or anything like that. There's a few problems with frequency lists nowadays. So for example, the fact that sometimes a frequency list, you'll see that like, they don't just have the word like to want, but sometimes they also put I want, he wants. You don't want that. You want to find a, a frequency list that just lists the dictionary form of words. And there's not like a multiple, there's not multiple forms of the same word on that list. So for example, there's not querer, which is Spanish for to want, and then also quiero, which is Spanish for I want. That's super important, so make sure you do that. And listen, I understand frequency lists, they're kind of boring. Um, so what I would recommend uh, everyone to do is if you are going to kind of go with this frequency list approach, you're gonna learn the words that are on there, focus mainly on nouns, verbs, and adjectives. Some of the prepositions towards the top be a little bit complicated in other languages. It's best to kind of learn them through osmosis, whereas typically any nouns, verbs, and adjectives that you come across should be what you're looking for, and you should try to learn five of them a day Day, five words a day keeps the doctor away. No, five words a day is manageable for a lot of people. And if you're able to kind of pull that off, then after a few months, you're going to start having this uh, vocabulary that's going to be building and building. You're going to be able to get into native content much quicker. When you are learning these words, I would recommend you to add them into something like Anki or a flashcard system, or at least just writing them down. Don't just look at like five words every day, but actually make a note of them. Um, so your brain can recognize them later on. So tip number three, super important. Something that I came up with very recently as well. Um, I started using this website called Webtoon. Basically it's a website where you can find a bunch of web comics and the comics are very, very good. Um, some of them are Korean, some of them are uh, American, some of them are Japanese. Um, and they're similar to like manga. Webtoons essentially has a version of their site where you can find almost all of their web comics translated into most popular languages. So if you're learning Spanish, if you're learning Portuguese, if you're learning German, if you go to their website, I'll link it right here, you'll be able to find hundreds of high quality comics that you can read and through reading, learn um, your language. And it's much more fun, especially as a beginner, to read uh, comic books, to learn 
uh, your language than it is to read actual books because um, honestly you're not going to know that much uh, when you're a beginner and having those pictures there of a dude who's angry and he's yelling something helps you not only remember the word but actually really acquire it into your vocabulary. It's a whole concept called comprehensible input. I'm not going to go into it but more or less it's very very good for your language learning. So tip number four in terms of learning a language quick, guys, passive listening is key. That means in your downtime, I don't care if you're, you know, on the toilet or you're walking your dog or you're going to work or you're actually at work and you're working but you have a job where you don't have to talk to a lot of people, make sure you're consuming media in the language as much as you can and you're listening to it as much as you can. This can take the form of podcasts, audiobooks, um, music, but more or less when you do find yourself with downtime, when you have to go to the gym, don't put on your typical playlist, put on that playlist in Japanese of Japanese music to pump you up because if you can make use out of a lot of what would normally be considered downtime or like time where you're doing other activities and interject you know your target language in there um, so you can expose yourself to language as much as, much as possible, then again Maybe if you're listening to an audiobook or you're listening to a podcast, it's not going to be the best way or the most fast way to learn a language in and of, it, in of itself. However, the fact that you are listening to it uh, off and on while you're doing another task is brilliant and it's really going to help you learn language fast overall just because you are um, interacting with that language even in moments where you normally wouldn't be. So the last and final tip, tip number five is reading novels, reading books, and also re-watching shows. So I'm giving you guys two options. It depends if you're more of a reader or if you are more of a, I guess, a, someone in, more into TV shows, um, more kind of visual person. But uh, me, I was always against reading for a very long time, especially in target languages that I've had, like such as Japanese, just because I was like, whoa, if I'm actually gonna read at the same level as like, I don't know, a third grader, it's gonna take a long time. However, now I regret uh, that I haven't read more because now I see it for what it is and what it is reading at its core is it's the fastest way to learn a language. Once you have already, you know, memorized a thousand or two thousand of the most common used words and you've read a few comic books and you feel like, okay, I'm good enough, like, to, to hop into an act reading an actual book, um, I would 100% advise you to do so because it is by far the fastest way to learn a language because essentially all it is is condensed language. Like you have to know the words or at least you have to look up the words if you don't know them in order to follow the story. But if you are gonna go down the reading path, you're gonna find some books, you're gonna find some novels. I, I beg you, please find stuff find content, find books that you are genuinely interested in, that are about the things that are interesting to you. Uh, if you like fantasy, read fantasy. If you like nonfiction, only practical books that help you with your business or your money or your life, only read them, but read them in the target language, in your target language, because you're going to enjoy it much more. And when you're, in, when you're enjoying it, when you get lost in the story, um, but every now and then you're looking up some words, that's when magic happens uh, in terms of acquiring a language and, um, you can learn it really quick. Reading aside, if you're really, really not into reading or if you're, let's say, learning a language like Japanese or Chinese where you're like, oh, it's gonna take me forever to, to learn the, the, um, the characters and stuff like this, I completely understand. I would recommend you to re-watch TV shows that you've already watched before in English uh, and re-watch them in your target language with no subtitles. What does that look like? Well, essentially, if you've watched Friends before a bunch of times, watch it again in Spanish or whatever language that you're trying to learn. If you've watched uh, an anime before with English subtitles, this time around, for the second time around, uh, watch it without the subtitles because what this is going to do is, is, is so powerful because you already know what's going to happen in the TV show and this and that information of knowing what's going to come next and having all the context of what's happening in the scene um, is really gonna help you decipher the language and acquire it um, pretty quickly as well. I remember watching Hunter x Hunter for the second time in French uh, and because I already knew everything that was gonna happen in that anime, I was like, yo, like it's weird, like I understand it. It was such a bizarre feeling but I would, I uh, highly recommend you guys to do that. I hope you enjoyed these five little tips. If you do uh, want any more advice or if you're personally curious about how I've learned the several languages that I've learned, uh, I would highly recommend you to check out my ebook, Fluency Made Easy. It has all of my tips, tricks, uh, advice to help manage your mental state. And just generally, it's seven years um, of my language learning um, experience put into a book that you can kind of read in an hour or two. Highly recommend you to check it out. It's available at fluencymadeeasy.com. Um, guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you uh, 
uh, in the next video. Take care.